When I challenge myself to do something, it tends to make me even better at my craft than I was. It makes me um, more passionate because it's another tool in my toolbox. It's another set of skills. I am Heidi Rosner and my medium is watercolor. Well, I was resistant to it for a while, um, but probably when I decided to make the leap into doing it full time, and that was around 2003. Um, but I was kind of in between making the decision to make the leap or stay doing what I was doing previously. So it was exciting, but also nerve wracking. <laughs> I think it was um, when I started getting more um, appreciation for my contribution as an artist. I had a consulting business and I, I, I got a lot of appreciation for what I was doing there, but the appreciation that I got from being an artist was different. It had a different feel to it, a different flavor, if you will. Um, not that I do it for recognition or appreciation, but when somebody tells me that something I've done has had an impact on how they feel every day, that's big. And that was really what enabled me to say, yeah, I mean, I'm, do I'm doing the right thing. This is, this is the good decision. Most of what I paint these days is um, subjects that occur in my world outside, my outside world. So plants and birds and critters and flowers and landscapes. I love to hike. I love to be out in my area. I live here in Arizona and so it's nice to be outside and appreciating all the desert has to offer and when I can take some of that and incorporate it into a piece of my work and have it reflect my love for what I see and where I live and how I choose to spend my time when I'm not painting. It's so gratifying because I love the desert so much. I tell people that I'm a lizard because I was born to be in a hot, dry environment and appreciate everything that there is about this place that we live in. It's just so fabulous. I love it. I am known for my color, my bright, bold, vibrant, rich, deep, saturated color and people have come to know me for that for my the backgrounds in my botanicals the foregrounds even my birds have bright vibrant colors associated with them either in the background or as part of their um, plumage and this year I decided to try something a little different and I experimented with um, leaving the field the background of a painting white instead of putting in these rich dynamic colors. So I did a few studies, small ones, um, hung them on the wall at the studio here and they sold immediately. And I liked them a great deal and I, I was kind of surprised by that. And so I decided, you know what, maybe I'll experiment with a bigger piece. And so I did. I experimented with a 3648 agave and I have this fabulous foreground of a beautiful torch glow agave. And while I was painting it, I was having little anxiety attacks <laughs> because the background wasn't filled in with color. I typically paint the background first on my pieces and that, that really kind of tells me what I want to do color-wise, tone-wise with the foreground. So it sets the stage, if you will. So I didn't set the stage on this one and I painted this subject and I kept like getting distracted by the white background going, oh my God, this is so white, what's gonna go on? So anyway, I left the background white, I finished the piece, um, varnished it, framed it, and it's currently one of my favorite pieces that I've ever done. It's so dramatic and so clean and crisp, but it, it just speaks to the dynamic energy of the light and shadow in the desert, and I love it. 
my people, the, the community of artists that are here. Um, they're amazingly talented. They're so diverse. Um, talking to any one of them on any given day, you learn some surprising nugget about them that you never knew existed. I mean, it's just, it, it, I've known many of these artists for decades and I still learn new things about them. Um, so the community of artists that are here are among the best in the country and that's a, it's a privilege to be among them, to be a peer. I love that. The, the clientele that comes through, my collectors, um, because I've been doing the show 21 years, I have people that come year after year after year that have become friends. They've become like family members to me. Um, they may have walls that are full and I don't honestly care. They come to visit, they come to say hello, sometimes they just need a hug. They, they have become an extension of my family because I see them every year. Um, and then there's the new collectors that come in with their energy and enthusiasm and their love of art. Whether they're new, you know, emerging artists that come just to see what the show is like, or serious collectors that want to fill their house with beautiful things, or people that just want to come in and have a good time and talk to some artists and feel the experience again and get energized. Doesn't matter, but the people that come to this show never cease to amaze me how interested they are in art and how much their their desire to learn more um, exists from year, year in and year out. And it's really lovely. Then there's the family. There's uh, Susan and Jake who run this show, that curate this show, that keep it running in great weather, in bad weather. They are um, two of the most capable humans I've ever met.